Good day. Welcome to reading part B of the OET reading series, the OET medical reading series with me, Trevor Gordon. In this video, we're going to look at part B. Uh, as I mentioned in other videos, I've kept all of these three parts separate. Um, in the exam, part B and part C will be together, but I thought it would benefit you to focus on one thing individually. Once you've watched the videos and you know what to do, then when you're practicing, you can just do B and C together, as in the exam. So, this page, as usual, just outlines the skills that are needed, um, skimming, scanning, etc. Um, it compares it with IELTS because any of you who are familiar with IELTS will know that all of these exams have similar skills that you need to have or to use. Okay, so let's begin. A single section. In part B, you will be relying on skimming and scanning again for the main idea of each text. Scanning to locate the information and synonyms and paraphrasing, same as before. All of these skills are being used constantly. So for this part of the test, there are six short passages, medical topics again, and we have multiple choice questions, this time with a A, B, C answer choice. So three answer choices and each passage is between 100 and 150 words. The techniques, as I've mentioned in other videos in this series, the keywords will help you get the main idea, look for the part of the text you need to read or locate, and the synonyms and paraphrasing. So keywords are everything. So, procedure. The first thing to do is read the title. This will start towards your understanding of the main idea of the text. The title of Medicine Cupboard Keys, for example, which is going to be the first example, will give you the idea that the passage will be about procedures or rules regarding access to medicines stored in cupboards. So that's going to be the main idea. As a medical professional, you may already be aware of these procedures, and this will be your opportunity to think of other keywords and synonyms and expressions that are used when talking about this topic. The next thing to do is to read the statements and questions and understand what you're being asked to do. So each one of the six questions will have a statement that tells you what to do or asks you a question. Okay, so the next thing to do is to read the answer choices. Because this is a much shorter exercise and the text is much shorter, it's probably a better idea to do this because once you know the keywords and you're reading the text, you can try to identify synonyms, paraphrasing of those keywords. There's only one topic, it's about medicine cupboard keys. So this would be a better way to do it. If you prefer to read the text first, that's fine. You can read the text, then look at the questions. It's whatever is the best for you. Okay, so now let's walk through an example. And we're going to look at the remaining part of the process. So here's our first topic, we have the statement. This is what it's asking you about. We have our three choices and then we have our text. Okay, so the guideline extract says that the nurse in charge, so we're talking about what the nurse in charge, something about what did she, she must do, she must follow, we don't know. Okay, so We've got, she must supervise the opening of the controlled drug cupboard. So here, must supervise, should make sure that all keys are kept together. So make sure this happens. 
delegate responsibility to another ward. So here, in this kind of text, modals are very important. Must, should, can, yes? These things tell you a lot more information about the text and you should include them in any keywords that you use. Okay, so for this, you can read most of it because there's only six of them. You can read most of it. Uh, you don't have to read all of it. You should read the first and last. But for this, you can kind of skim through most of it. Okay, so the keys for the controlled drug cupboard, responsibility of the nurse in charge. Okay, we got that. We got that idea from here. They may be passed to a registered nurse. So we're using a modal here, may. Fits in with our others. Must, should, can. They must be returned to a registered nurse and returned to the nurse in charge. Okay. Sorry, they may be charged. So they can be passed. Yes. Not must or not should. They can be passed to another nurse. If the keys go missing, locks must be changed and pharmacy informed. Okay, here's a must. The controlled drug cupboard keys should be kept separately from the main body of the keys. Apart from in exceptional circumstances, the keys should not leave the ward. Now here it says they should not leave the ward, but we have this sentence, apart from in exceptional circumstances. So they can leave the ward, but only in emergency. And the exceptional circumstances is some kind of emergency. So if necessary, the nurse in charge should arrange for the keys to be held in the neighboring ward or department by the nurse in charge there. So we've kind of got an idea of what they're talking about and how it ties in with our statement. So we can see that keywords have been highlighted in all of the question statements, choices and the passage. So everything's been highlighted. So what are they asking you to answer? The nurse in charge. That's what it's about. What she has to do or something about her duties. We have three choices. Can, should, must. The modal verbs are very crucial to the text. So we go through them. Looking at references to the modal verbs. If you're not sure what modal verbs is, ah, sorry, uh, look them up. I think by looking at those three verbs there, you should have an idea of what modal verbs are. So you go through the text noting the references to modal verbs. They may be passed to a registered nurse. The locks must be changed. Keys should be kept separately from. Keys should not leave the ward. If necessary, keys should, the nurse should arrange for the keys to be given to a neighboring ward. Okay, so these are the things that we're going to get our answer from. These are the main sections we're looking for because they match the ideas in the choices. Choice A says that the nurse in charge must supervise the opening of the cupboard. This is not mentioned. It says nothing about opening the cupboard. Yes, it says for them to carry out their duties return to the nurse. It says, if the keys go missing, the locks must be changed. And um, the keys should be kept separately and they can be given to a neighboring ward. It says nothing about opening the door. So we can, we remove that one, okay? This is not mentioned in the text, so we remove that. Choice B says, all keys must be kept together. Okay, let's look at our thing. All keys kept together. Now, it clearly states the opposite. It says, keys should be kept separately. Sorry, the controlled drug cupboard keys should be kept separately from the main body of keys. Clearly tells us there. So that is not the answer. Okay, it states the opposite. 
So the final choice says, the nurse should arrange for the keys to be um, given to a neighbor, someone in a neighboring ward, okay? In the final sentence of the text, it clearly states, if necessary, the nurse in charge should arrange for the keys to be held in a neighboring ward or department by the nurse in charge there. Now we know this because this can be paraphrased as she can do this if she needs to do it. Yes, in an emergency, she can do this. Yes, if she has to do this, then she should arrange it. So they mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. The word delegate is also a paraphrase of should arrange for the keys to be given to someone else. You're de delegating the responsibility of those keys to somebody else. And a neighboring ward equals another ward. Another ward is a neighboring ward. A neighboring ward just means a ward next door or very near to this ward, but it could also say another ward. So the answer here is C. If you're unsure, please read the text choices, stop the video, look at the examples again, go through it, practice the questions again, follow the steps and just practice this. Um, when you get an answer wrong, find out why you got it wrong. That will help you. Don't just think, oh, I got the answer wrong, I'll move on to the next one. No, find out why you got it wrong. It's about your technique. It's about your use of grammar and many other things. So this is what you should be practicing. Okay, so let's do another one. In the next example, we follow the same process. When seeking consent for a post-mortem examination, it is necessary to. So we need consent to do this. We need to do this. We need to give a valid reason for doing it, conducting it. We need to allow all relatives the opportunity to decline it, to say no. We should only raise or talk about the subject after the patient has died, or after death has occurred. Okay, so, sorry. I've, of course, we would read the beginning to get an idea. A senior member of the clinical team, preferably the consultant in charge of the care, should raise the possibility of a post-mortem examination with the most appropriate person to give consent. That will be friends or family, usually family. The person consenting or agreeing to let them do it will need an explanation of the reasons for the post-mortem examination and what it hopes to achieve. So, the first approach should be made as soon as it is apparent that a post-mortem examination may be desirable, as there is no need to wait until the patient has died. Many relatives are more prepared for consenting procedure if they have had time to think about it beforehand. We can read the passage because it's very short. Okay, everything is highlighted. So now we go through the request. We're looking for references for looking for consent post-mortem. And we can also add necessary. It might be useful. From the choices, we're looking at valid reason, allow all relatives, decline, only raise and after death. So for this one, what I've done, is, unlike the first question, what I've done here is I've given you some synonyms from the text that we could be looking for. Consent could be permission, the go ahead, the all clear. They're paraphrases. A postmortem will not have a synonym because a postmortem is called a postmortem, nothing else. Necessary, have to, must, a necessity, an obligation possible words, reason, reasons, explanation, possible synonyms. Allow, raise the possibility. We could also say give permission if we want. Decline, okay, there's no mention of decline in there. Um, it's in the choices, but there's no synonyms or anything relevant to decline in the text. Only raise, 
could be the first approach and should raise. Those two come from the text. After death equals the patient has died. Okay, so this one I've done differently from the other one. So you can look, you can see different ways to do it. Okay, so we can use these to help us, I should say, when reading the text. They may not be the exact words you're looking for, but it's possible that some of them may be used. Remember, you need to give yourself every opportunity to answer the questions. So try and use, think of as many, not as many possibilities as you can, but several possibilities that could be relevant and could be used to paraphrase or as synonyms. Okay, A, give a valid reason for conducting it. There is a reference to the person consenting will the person consenting will need an explanation of the reasons. That is the paraphrase. Allow all relatives the opportunity to decline it. There are no references to decline or anything else that can be referenced. It talks about some, some relatives, but it doesn't say all relatives. Only raise the subject after death has occurred. Clearly in the text, there is a statement that reads, there is no need to wait until the patient has died. So we know that is not it. We also know that is not it because there are no references. But here is a clear paraphrase. So, of the three statements, the only one which can be referenced correctly from the passage is A, because B is not mentioned and C says the opposite. So the answer is therefore A. That's the end of the examples. Again, we've provided a link underneath the video so you can download the material for part B and practice it. There are four more questions for you to do, so practice them. And um, if you have any questions or feedback, please put comments in the video or you can, you can also um, go to our website. There's uh, usually a chat box open on the home page. So you can just click the, the uh, chat and ask us any questions and we can answer them for you. So that's the end of this part of the lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at reading part C. Um, please subscribe to our channel and also visit our website. And if you would like to book classes with us, um, we've, we have two native teachers, myself and another native teacher with many years of OET and IELTS experience, ready and willing to help you. Okay, I hope you, this video become, becomes of some benefit to you or gives you um, more of an idea of how to approach these tasks and um, see you in another video.